All right. Well, uh, good, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this uh, session on PaintShop Pro uh, X6. Uh, name is Roger Wombolt. Uh, some of you do know me. We've uh, I've been uh, have the the pleasure of uh, doing the TMS sessions in California for the past uh, five or six years, and had a lot of fun doing those. Uh, for those that don't know me, as I say, the name is Roger Wombolt. I'm global training coordinator with uh, Corel Corporation. My main product focus is uh, Corel Draw. However, I do uh, introductory sessions on PaintShop Pro as well as Video Studio. So uh, we had the idea to do this session on PaintShop Pro for you guys. Um, I do this uh, introductory session once a month. I've uh, changed up a little bit of the content, and I'll try and talk more towards the type of work that you guys do, and hopefully you'll get a little bit more out of it. This uh, session is being recorded, and uh, I'll get you, um, and Justin to post it uh, once we've ended the session. It'll probably happen uh, within the next week or so. So, uh, on the right-hand side, you have your uh, webinar panel. Uh, that's where you can uh, put any questions you may have as we go through this, uh, through this session. I'll endeavor to answer those questions as we go along. And then at the end of the session, uh, time permitting, I'll open up the microphones and uh, try to answer those questions and answer any additional questions that you may have. So, without further ado, let's uh, get started. What you're looking at on the screen right now is the help guide that comes up from clicking on the help menu and go to video tutorials. This is part of our uh, what we call the Discovery Center. Uh, another way to get to the Discovery Center, if you do not have PaintShop Pro, is to go to learn.corel.com and it will bring up the Discovery Center for you. Here there are both text-based as well as video tutorials on uh, PaintShop Pro, Video Studio, as well as Corel Draw. The, um, there are a number of tutorials here. You can also get access to uh, the Tools You Need section uh, in here. There are books on the application. There's books on Corel Draw that are available, as well as live training. Uh, we do conduct one-on-one conduct -on -one sessions uh, uh, on request as well. So that's enough of that. Okay, so what we're looking at right now is the uh, PaintShop Pro interface. Uh, it's a three-prong approach. We start off with the Manage. We have the Adjust tab and the Edit tab. Along the left-hand side is my Navigation panel. Along the bottom, it's collapsed right now, but this is my Organization panel. And then we have the Preview screen. In order to bring content in, I'm going to select Browse More Folders. This will allow me to browse to a location uh, where I have the files that I want to open up. Now I'm in thumbnail view right now, and as you can see I've got a number of different thumbnails in here of the various images that I have in that specific folder. If I go into preview mode, this allows me then to see my organization tray along the bottom, and I have my navigation along the side. You'll also notice that I can zoom in and zoom out on the image. I can also give it a star rating. So I have particular images that I either use a lot, I want to get quick access to, or some of my more, more favorite images, and then I can give them a higher star rating. I also have the ability to have it show me all three star, all two star images, five star images, and that sort of thing. Um, the next thing we have on the right hand side are our dockers or our palettes. You'll notice that I have the info palette opened up here. If I select a specific image, I get a preview, and on the right-hand side we have information such as ISO uh, <coughs> and various tabs along here. So we have the general information, the EXIF data, uh, IBTC, people, and places, and we'll talk about those as we go through as to what those actually are. Along the bottom is the navigation, as I've mentioned, and the, or I'm sorry, the organizer. And the organizer allows me to do a number of uh, different things. I can very quickly, for example, select a range of images, and I can share these. Uh, if I have it set up for Facebook, Flickr, or my Google Plus account, I can very quickly upload those to, that, uh, to those servers. I have the ability to do uh, something called Share My Trip. I'll talk about that in a few minutes, as well as some quick rotations. Now, if I double-click on one of the images, you'll notice in here I have this uh, navigation bar across the bottom. This will allow me to zoom in, zoom out on the image. I can rotate it. I don't like this particular image. I can throw it in the trash, or I can very quickly give it a star uh, rating. And it allows me to very quickly go through my images and uh, identify whether or not I want to keep those, uh, as well as what sort of star ratings. Also in the, <coughs> excuse me, in the, uh, on the general tab rather, 
I have the ability to apply tags. So I can have this as wood, I can have it as texture, any number of things. If you have a particular account, maybe you want to take some certain imagery or logos that are tagged to that specific, or uh, use that specific account uh, and tag it with, uh, with the account name. Or if you use them in a specific template, you can tag it with the, te uh, the template name. And so if you're doing, using a specific, well, like a 2x3 template, then you might want to type in 2x3, and it will bring up all the images that you're going to use for that specific template. So that basically is the manage mode. The adjust mode uh, is where we can go and do some very quick adjustments on the images. Now let me just bring up, you'll notice my navigation panel disappeared. I can easily bring that up by clicking on this icon down here. One other thing with respect to these panels, you'll notice that I have a push pin. This push pin allows me to auto hide it or actually have it docked where I want to. So right now it's set to auto hide. If I need to access the navigation panel again, it's simply a matter of moving my mouse over to it and I can browse to the folder uh, that I want. I have the same flexibility, the same ability to do this in my organization tab as well. So let's get, uh, all right, so in the, um, in the adjust tab is where I can go through a whole collection of images and do some very quick adjustments. I have the ability for uh, brightness, shadow, highlights. I can adjust saturation on the image very quickly, very easily. You'll notice I also have other features in here, such as white balance. So if I've taken an image and it's a little on the blue cast, or maybe it's a little bit too warm, maybe I shot it under tungsten light and it's, it's too warm, I want to cool it down a bit, then I can certainly do that, uh, that sort of thing as well. I have the ability to remove noise. So if I have a shot that was taken in low light conditions, I can remove the noise from that image and basically fix that up. There's also some instant effects over on the right-hand side, uh, and these are sorted by, the, uh, by various themes. So portrait, for example, these are some of the different effects that I would apply if it was a portrait type shot. And it's simply a matter of double-clicking on, uh, on the effect that you want, and it will apply that to it. Uh, the next tab over, and this is where we're going to spend the rest of the, time, the, uh, the session in. I'm going to click No to that. And I'm going to bring up my navigation panel, and it's pinned in place. And I'm going to go to my cropping now. Uh, the, I'm going to close off a couple of these panels. I don't need them. This is going to give me a little bit more real estate uh, on the, uh, in the application. So on the Edit tab, across the top, we have the standard drop-down menus. And if by chance, and I noticed uh, on the registration listing, uh, of the group that's registered for this session, uh, about half of them, half of you guys are currently using PaintShop Pro, either X5 or X6. If you're uh, trying to follow the video along, along later on and yours doesn't look like mine, uh, easy enough from the file menu down to preferences and then you can reset preferences. And of course I did this before I started this session and that way the application is going to look like it does when it comes uh, right from the box. So drop down menus, your standard toolbar, and this is your inter interactive property bar. And this is going to change depending on the tool that you have selected. And it's going to give you additional features or parameters for that specific tool. The toolbox is down the left hand side. And any icon that has a downward pointing triangle, it's an indication that there's additional features buried below that. Along the bottom, as I say, is our organizer tray. And palettes appear along the right hand side. First tool I want to talk about is cropping, and I'm going to bring up this image here. Uh, if you're in a situation where you're trying to crop images, uh, let's say you need a specific logo. One of the things we've done with PaintShop Pro, and I think it's kind of unique for the application, is I have the ability of marking off a specific logo. Let me just zoom into this. I want this particular logo. Uh, maybe you want to cut three logos out of here. Typically what you would do is you'd click OK on this, and then you have to open up the original file again. Here I have the ability to click this icon over here. It's going to crop it for me. It's then going to put that into the background, and it's going to allow me to go through and crop my next one. And I can very quickly go through this entire document and crop out all the logos that I need. So it's a great way to save time. I'm going to grab one more logo, and let's grab this one here. Simple as that. 
You'll also notice that uh, we have the tabs across the top, and these, let's close this one off, these are the um, current documents that I have opened. I have the ability to do a tabbed approach, or from the Windows menu, if I deselect tab, then they'll be cascading windows. Personally, I prefer the tabbed approach. I find it keeps the interface cleaner, and I know exactly which file I'm working on. The next thing with respects to, uh, next one down I want to talk about is the fill flash. Uh, that's great if you have a situation where an image was shot and the flash didn't go off, or maybe the flash wasn't strong enough. Uh, from the uh, image menu, and I always lose this, it's actually adjust menu, down to fill flash, and here I have the ability to adjust the strength of the flash and make it a usable image. Here's a shot at one of the regionals that, uh, that I was a mess. Uh, not a bad shot, but again, the flash wasn't very strong. If I go to my Adjust menu, down to Fill Flash, you'll see I can very quickly brighten that up and get a better idea as to uh, how this shot can look. One other thing I want to point out to you is a lot of these dial bo dialog boxes that appear have a little check mark in the upper right-hand corner. This allows me to preview this on the menu. So I'm getting a live preview as I'm going through these various settings. That's not too bad, but maybe I want a bit more saturation, then I can certainly adjust the saturation on that until I get a usable image. The um, next one down is Perspective and Straighten. Uh, I've taken a couple of images from the um, uh, AB uh, Sign Shop page, and I've uh, brought them in here. Uh, this one, for example, very nice, uh, nice image was taken. I want to take this and I want to work that up. So we have somebody going out to a customer site, they take the shot. Now we want to take a look at this, we want to sort of straighten that up. In my toolbox on the left hand side, I have straighten and I have perspective correction. I'm going to grab my straighten tool. And the way the straighten tool works, it's simply a matter of moving these two nodes onto a line that should be horizontal. So if I mark this off as being horizontal, and uh, the uh, that then allows you to, to uh, once I've selected that, I'll simply click the check mark. Now I noticed in the, uh, the question panel, um, we have someone without audio. Uh, this is being recorded. You may want to check your audio settings to see why you don't have the audio or possibly plug headset in, but it is being recorded. I've started the recorder on that. Okay, so very quick and very easy. Uh, I can um, straighten an image. I'll do that a couple more times. We'll take a look at this one here. And here's a bridge uh, in behind our parliament buildings, which is comparable to your White House. I'm going to draw the horizontal line across that and click on the check mark. It also works well with um, vertical. So here's an image that uh, for some reason the photographer didn't wasn't paying too much attention to, and we can very quickly, very easily line that up and make it more accurate. The next one in here is sort of a wow factor. It's perspective correction. Uh, here's a shot I took uh, on board uh, the uh, John Wayne's uh, vessel, the wild goose or the goose chase or something like that. And uh, it's a nice shot, but I want to make it look as though I'm looking at that straight on. So perspective correction. Similar, I'm going to take these handles and put them as to where I feel that should be looking at square on. I'm just going to draw this in here. And this is great if you have a, a design, maybe, you want, maybe you've taken a shot of a window uh, from a bit of an angle, and you want to try and get that font. You want to find, try and figure out what that font is. Bring it into Paint Shop Pro, adjust the perspective on that, and then take that image and bring it into Corel Draw and use what the font to determine what that particular font is. So it's a great way to, to help uh, using both applications together. So again, once again, uh, one of the local churches we have, very quick and very easy. And I'm going to click on my check mark, and there you have it. So I'm looking at it uh, square on. Now the next one is selective focus. <clears throat> selective focus works well. Uh, a couple of different things. If I have a specific, uh, maybe I've got a product shot where I want the bottles to stand out and uh, I may have subjects in the background, maybe it's a barbecue or something like that, and I want them slightly out of focus. Selective focus allows me to concentrate on an area and have it in sharp focus. So with my image selected, I go to my effects menu, down to photo effects, and then to selective focus. 
With the selective focus, there's two different uh, methods. One is the linear, and then the other is radial. So if I select radial, and you'll notice uh, in a situation I mentioned beer bottle uh, or, or product, uh, you know, or product packaging, that sort of thing, I can certainly rotate this. I can position this and stretch it, make it whatever shape and size I want. And then I can adjust the feathering and opacity and that sort of thing. I also have the ability to reduce the saturation. I would probably want to do it in an image like this because I wouldn't really want that color shift uh, to take place. But if I bring the blur amount up on this, you can see it'd be a great way to uh, focus on my, on my subject and throw the rest of it uh, out of focus. We can do the same with a linear. So again, from the uh, effects menu, down to photo effects, select a focus. And this is a shot uh, taken by one of my colleagues uh, down in Newfoundland. I'm going to take this image, let's make that a little bit wider. This is a great way to create a, a tilt shift type of effect, almost make it look like a um, landscaping for a model railway set or something like that. Grab that picture, I'll get rid of that. So very quick and very easy to have uh, imagery in sharp focus and, uh, and throw the rest of it out. Uh, the next one, uh, this is more for like personal photographs and that sort of thing. I, I can't really see it too much in, uh, in, in the uses that you guys do in your, in your sign shops and whatnot. But nonetheless, it's a fairly effective uh, um, effect that we can, uh, we can provide. Now, before going any further, one thing I want you to remember, if you take nothing else away from this session, F10. Just write it down, F10. If you get stuck in the application, you don't know how to use a specific tool, tap F10 on the keyboard, that's going to open up the Learning Center. Now the Learning Center is organized very logically. I have my home button. I want to get photos. This is going to tell me how I can import folders. I can get it from my, my uh, memory card, scan it, all sorts of stuff like that. The next step down is quick adjustments, things like rotating, cropping, red eye, resizing, and that sort of thing. And so it's very easy to navigate through here. Another nice thing about the Learning Center is if I come over here and I click on a specific tool, and I don't know how to use that tool, my Learning Center is going to change. It's going to tell me how to use that tool. Furthermore, under more details, it's going to launch the help file, and it's going to give me more detailed information on exactly how to use that tool. So F10, remember that. If you get stuck, it'll, uh, it'll help you out a lot. Now, I want to show you a fade correction. I'm going to click Home. I want to go to Retouch and Restore and then fade correction. This is an effect that happens very, very quickly. I'm going to click on this before I finish my sentence. It'll do, it'll do it. Uh, so very quick, I can take old faded photographs and get them cleaned up quite nice. It also works for uh, shots that were taken with inferior lighting. Here we have a wedding shot taken from a balcony, and so you have probably mercury vapor lamps or uh, heavy-duty lamps in, in the church, and it's caused this bit of a cast. Fade correction really picks that up nice, and of course I can bump this up and uh, bring up more detail, and then use other tools within the application to really make this image stand out. Here's a uh, here's another one here again, single click, very quick. It just pops it right up and uh, makes it quite nice. I can go ahead and use this image for whatever job I want to. The next tool is probably the most common tool that I've been asked. Uh, when it comes to Paint Shop Pro, from you guys, um, you designers, this is probably the tool I get asked the most often, is how can I change the color of an object? I'm going to start with this one, fairly straightforward, fairly simple. The color changer tool can be found underneath my flood fill. I'll select it, and when I do that, you'll notice that the Materials palette appears. If it wasn't there already, it would automatically appear. I'm going to click on an area that I want to change the color for. Now, you'll notice that it didn't change the entire color. It's because my tolerance is a little low. I can do one of two things. I can click in this area as well, or I can simply bump up the tolerance. So very quick and very easy, I've changed the color. That's nice, but I want a light green. I'll click over here. Let's try that again. There we go. And I can click around. Just a minute. Let 
Bear with me for a second. It is not behaving. There we go. So uh, what I can do here is very quickly uh, go through the entire design and pick whatever color I want that, quick and easy. Do it once more with this. I'll select the area I want to change color and then simply change the color. That's all there is to it. This uh, image down here, this young girl, I want to change the headband, but I don't want to change the blue. So in this scenario, what I would do is I'd grab my freehand selection tool, and I'm simply going to create a mask around the area that I want to affect. And then with my color changer tool, click on the area, and I've missed that, so let me just fix that up. And I can go through and I can change the color, make it whatever color I want. So it's just affecting this area. Um, on the uh, those that are on the sign shop page, you may have seen this image recently. Uh, I was somebody had posted and asked if uh, if we could possibly change the color uh, for this particular image. Uh, it was quite easy to do because of the uh, other colors in the design that are close to that. If I select his jersey and try to change that color, it's going to change too much of it. Control Z to undo. What I did is I used the mask tool and created a mask. Now PaintShop Pro allows you to save your mask. So under selection, load save, I'm going to load a selection from the disk. This is the mask that was created for that image. And now when I go through and I click on the color I want, it's going to apply it to just that image. Bear with me for a second. My tolerance is way too high. So do a couple undos. I know the tolerance is too high as it grabbed the white in that logo as well. Uh, so now I can go through here and pick whichever color I want. Uh, it's a great way to very quickly, very easily change the color to match the theme or match the content of the, uh, of the poster, of the cooler wrap, or whatever it is you're, you're currently working on. Uh, the next one down is Time Machine. This is a great way if you wanted to create a black and white, white effect or something like that. And PaintShop Pro is one of the very few applications that sort of give you a, a photography history lesson uh, when you're using it. Time Machine, I want to get to that. An easy way to get there is I'm going to go home in my Learning Center. I want to go to Effects. And no, I don't. I want to go to... You know, one of the things with, with um, uh, PaintShop Pro is that there's just so many things in here. And uh, remembering where they all are is uh, a bit challenging at times. So here we have Time Machine. I'll simply click on that. Again, I have the ability to preview on the image. And let's just move this aside. I've got a little bit of a lag here. It's uh, not showing it. There we go. Uh, so first one is daguerreotype. It tells me the range or the data time frame when, when this particular uh, effect was in play. Uh, I can go with the albumin. I have cyanotype. Uh, my favorite is the is the platinum. And of course, it does the uh, the edges that are associated with that type of imagery as well. I certainly have the ability to turn that edge on and off as well as adjust the intensity of that, uh, of that particular effect. So if you're looking for a black and white theme, maybe you want to have uh, your product in bright, vivid color, but the entire background you want to have as an old vintage photograph, then you can certainly do that, and it might lead to a, a pretty nice effect. I'm going to cancel this one out. The other, uh, the other question we get asked an awful lot about is uh, background eraser or background removal. Now, <clears throat> I'm just going to bring up two images. And I'll bring up this one. Or actually, let me go back to one of the earlier shots I have here. This particular image here, for example, I want to take this crest 
that I've cut out of that image. Let's say I've gone to uh, Google, I've done an advanced search, I found a high-res logo, and now I want to take this and I want to put this in my design. Underneath the eraser tool, I have my background eraser. And when I look at the, uh, the brush or the nib of that, you'll notice that I have a large circle and then a pencil within that. Whatever this black piece on the pencil or the eraser touches, it will be erased. I can adjust the size of my brush by holding down the Alt key and I can zoom in and zoom out. I'm going to take this, I'll left click, and that now will allow me to go around. You'll notice that the circle is overlapping or is touching my logo, yet it's not erasing. That's only because the black tip is not. One thing I recommend you do is every once in a while, let go of your mouse button, and that way if you accidentally make a mistake, do your oops key, control Z, and you don't have to erase all of that again, just matter of picking up where you left off sort of thing. So very quick and very easy. I can go around here. If I want to, I can go into the center as well. If I make this a little bit bigger, It's getting in within the weed itself. And there we have my logo. I can take this out and uh, bring it into my, my design. Now, as far as output from PaintShop Pro, there are quite a variety of different file formats that we support. Uh, the obvious TIFF and JPEG, as well as Photoshop. So if you happen to use Photoshop, we can send it out as a PSD. Uh, to bring it to Photo Paint, we do not support the CPT file format in and out, but you can certainly use uh, either a PNG or the um, uh, or the uh, the PSD to uh, to take that in and out of uh, uh, out of Photo Paint. If you want to bring it into Draw and you want the transparency, then of course either a PSD or a PNG would probably be your best bet. All right, so that's your <clears throat> your background eraser tool. Let me go back to the other images and I'll show you another scenario where you might want to use that. So I'm going to bring this image in. Control A to select all, Control C to copy. I'll go to this image and Control V to paste. Now again, whatever that black tip touches will be erased. Control Z to undo. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. <coughs> and now it's just a matter of clicking here and I'm going to move around and erases. Note that it's going around the tree, not a problem at all. If you do have an area where there's a lot of detail and you need to uh, erase in behind where that detail is, give yourself a much bigger brush and it will allow you to do just that. One of the things you'll notice about this particular image is if I zoom in to this cathedral roof here, you can actually see the antenna is still intact even though I've erased around that. So very, very effective tool. Uh, next I want to show is uh, object remover. Now this is another shot I took down in uh, <clears throat> was down in, in California. Uh, I'm going to go to my um, clone tool. Underneath the clone tool I have an object remover and I have a scratch remover. Let's start with the object remover. And the way the object remover works is select that. And I think what I might do is once I finish this image, I have quite a few images opened up right now. So I'm going to close those down just so we don't uh, have that much of a lag time. And, and basically what it's doing right now is it's backing up or it's saving those images. So let me, uh, let's let it finish doing that and then we'll, we'll close all. From the Windows menu, I can select close all. And this is a great little thing to point out as well. If I have a number of different images that I want to bring in, let's say I've got about 15 images that I have to do some minor tweaks. Rather than opening up an image, doing the tweak, saving it, opening up the next one, doing whatever I need to, and then saving that, I simply open up the images, do all my changes that I need to as I open them up, and then I can hit it click on Save Selected, and it will save all those changes that I've made. So very quick and very easy to save yourself a little bit of time. I'm just going to do a Close All. And now with this image here, we need to open it back up again. Object 
Lasso Remover works fairly simple. When I select it, it will give me my lasso tool. I want to remove this object and I want to replace it with this texture over here or this object over here. So I select that. I'm simply going to click on my check mark and very quick and very easy, it didn't do it. Well, isn't that interesting? <laughs> All right, I'll have to, uh, we'll let you know what happens with this one later on. I'm not sure why it's not working right now. Let me uh, try something here. It worked in rehearsal. <laughs> Let's bring this back up. Just bear with you for a second. All right, so we want to do object remover. I select the area that I want to remove. I'm going to select the area that I want to replace it with. And there you have it. And then selection, none. It's possible the reason it didn't do it before is because I may have had the, uh, the, uh, the square uh, portion smaller than the, the masked area. Uh, one other tool in there that works quite well, uh, if you have an image, uh, you've, gone out, you've taken a shot and you have hydro lines or power lines, or if it's an older faded photograph, underneath here we have the scratch remover. And the way the scratch remover tool works, and let me just bump this up really, really big, a lot larger than I would normally use it, just so I can explain to you how it works. What you're looking at here is there's a horizontal bar on the top, or a space, there's a horizontal space on the bottom, and a larger space in the middle. So what we do is we take the pixel color and texture from the top and the bottom and dump it into the middle. So if I take this tool, let me just drop it down in size a bit, and I'm going to stroke right down here, I'll let the mouse button go, and very quick and very easy, I've removed that line. This works great for bars on images, if you have power lines, uh, uh, you know, scratches on the image, that sort of thing. And of course, this area here, we can always use the clone tool on that, or whatever the case may be. Works well on diagonal lines as well. Just run it along, and it's going to remove that line for us quite, quite nicely. Uh, the next one is Smart Carver. Uh, for those that have been at the regional, have seen this image, have seen Smart Carver work before. This feature is in Photo Paint as well, and it's under the Image menu in Photo Paint. Same location as it, as it is in, uh, in Paint Shop Pro. So I'm going to select Smart Carver. Now, one thing you may have noticed a couple of times is when I go into some of these tools, you get this Getting Started palette. I told you at the onset that we try to make the application easy to use, sort of give a one, two, three approach. Here we have the very similar thing. It's a one, two, three approach. It tells me brush out, brush in, and squeeze. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click OK to that. I took a, a wedding a couple of years back. I, I noticed afterwards these balloons, I want to get rid of those balloons. I'm also going to remove this tree. So I'm going to brush out the other one. And you know something super critical? That brush is kind of large, but I'll just leave that. And I want to brush out this tree as well. I'm getting quite a bit of a delay on this side here. Now, anytime I'm going to remove an object where I have my subject close to that object, what I'll want to do is I'll want to brush in or protect the area. So I'm just going to draw a stroke down here. Now I'm going down here. And now I simply want to squeeze it, if you remember the one, two, three. So I'll squeeze this, and very quick, very easy. I also have background fusion to help with the background a little bit in the area where it uh, removed from. I'll click OK, and I can now take this image and put that, uh, well, in this scenario, I can sell it to the groom and uh, make a little bit more money from it. OK, the next I want to talk about is HDR. Uh, again, some of these features, I can certainly see you using some of the features, maybe not so much, unless you do a lot of photography uh, uh, for your personal life as well. I know some of you certainly do, and certainly take some really awesome shots. Um, but HDR uh, stands for High Dynamic Range, and it basically, what it does is it allows you to take what we call bracketed shots. So I'm going to take these three shots. I'll right-click and I'm going to select HDR, 
exposure merge. HDR stands for high dynamic range, as I said, and what it basically means is it's, or what it allows me to do is it allows me to take an underexposed shot, so two stops under, normal exposure, and two stops over. Here we have an underexposed shot. You can see that the exposure for the lighting is quite good, but I have no detail in here at all. If I took a look at the overexposed shot, here my lights are all washed out, but I have detail in the shadow. I've got detail over here as well. And this is the normal exposure. Again, a little dark. This is washed out a bit. So using HDR, I can select these images. You'll notice that I have an auto brush, a brush in, and a brush out. Why do we have that? It's simple. If I've taken three shots, yeah, I want to do an HDR merge, and let's say shot number two, an airplane was passing by. I would want to brush out that airplane. Uh, or if I have, um, uh, maybe I have a subject uh, in, in the image in different positions, and I want him in that, in that same image in all different positions, then that's easy enough to do as well. So with these three selected, it's simply a matter of clicking on process, or process, and there we have it. So nice exposure on the lights, nice exposure over here. We have the shadow detail has been revealed uh, on both sides. We also give you the ability to have a couple of other um, themes, if you will, or, or uh, uh, profiles to, uh, to give you a different type of effect. Uh, my, my personal favorite is this default five. I, I kind of like that. It makes me think of old 50s, uh, 50s and 60s neon signs for some reason. But anyway, let's close this off. And the next one I want to talk about is uh, single HDR. Single HDR, same sort of thing. It allows you to uh, do a, uh, a merge of an HDR shot. I have mentioned we need two shots on, or two exposures on, two stops under normal and two stops over. Uh, if I have taken with RAW, if I shot a RAW image, then, and I want to use the single HDR if I want to do an HDR merge, then I have the ability to split the photo. And I can dictate what sort of exposure compensation I want for my under and my over. I'm just going to select this. I'll select split photo. And what it's going to do is it's going to look at that raw data and it's going to create one underexposed, one normal exposure, and one overexposed. And now when I click in process, it's going to do the same sort of thing. It's going to merge those three shots together and it's going to give me uh, a lot more detail in the shadows, a lot more detail in the highlights. And of course, that's what it's all about. All right, let's close this off. The next one is Photo Blend. Now, Photo Blend allows me to blend multiple images together. Uh, so if you're doing, uh, what's a good example? I've got two shots, same background in both, but I've got different subjects in these two shots. I can take subjects from shot A and put them in shot B and say, well, this is, I want background from shot B, and so we've actually combined two images together. I'm going to take these shots here, right click, and go to Photo Blend. These are shots I took last year of my granddaughter, and we're just playing around. I wanted to create a series of shots specifically to show this uh, show this feature. So we had we had fun doing it. So here we have one shot here. I want to brush in the area that I want to keep. So I'll select Brush In, and I'm just going to paint the area. Again, notice I'm not too concerned about the the uh, uh, the accuracy of my paintbrush. Here she is over here. And I was getting ready for a trade show at the time down in uh, uh, San Antonio, Texas. And I decided to take that hat with me, a cowboy hat, and she wanted to wear it. So we'll grab this shot as well. And here, of course, we have to get Dolly, her little baby. Grab the next one. And one thing you may notice while I'm doing this is the background seems to be shifting. Uh, I was using a small point-and-shoot camera. And uh, I had the camera set on a uh, on the counter, uh, and of course it was arborite counter, so it was sliding and whatnot. So you'll notice a bit of a shift in a situation like that. Try to find the images which has the most common background to it, and that appears to be this one here. And on the bottom left-hand corner here, I'm going to click this lock, and what that basically does it says, let's use this image as our main background. And then it's simply a matter of clicking on process, and very quick, it's going to turn around and come back to me with an image 
um, just filled with uh, uh, with your subject in there. I did a little bit of a mess up over here. I'm not sure what happened there, but uh, uh, so you can see how, how quick and easy something like that is. The um, next one I want to talk about, and I guess this basically brings us close to the end of it, um, the next one I want to talk about are makeover tools. Now the makeover tools can be used for a couple of different uh, purposes. I'm going to uh, double click on this. This will bring up this image and underneath my red eye I have my makeover tools. Here we have a number of different tools. There's the blemish fixer, toothbrush, I have my red eye or my eye drops. I, I should correct myself. It is not red eye. Uh, it's eye drops, so that will fix the white in the eyes. So if you've had one of those late nights, uh, too much partying, that's what you need to use. You have your sun, uh, sun tan tool, and then of course the last one is Thinify. Actually, let's bring this up. And Thinify, very simple, fairly easy to use, just a matter of clicking and dragging, and that will uh, skinny the person out uh, somewhat. Not overly, but you get the idea. Let's go back to <clears throat> this gentleman here. With my makeover or my blemish fixer, I've shown you the uh, scratch remover. Blemish fixer works basically the same way. Hold the Alt key down to resize my brush. It's basically going to take the textures and coloring from the outer ring and dump it to the inner ring. Very similar to a clone tool, but it's over top of each other, the, the source and the target. So let me just make that a little bit smaller. And single click. Now that's actually a little bit too big, so I'm going to do Control Z. Hold the Alt key down, make it a little bit smaller. So as you can see, I can go around the image and get rid of the blemishes that he's got there. Let's bring up this image. And so here we have this young lady. We want to do a, a little bit of a, bit of a touch up on her. Again, Alt key to adjust your brush size. It's a little bit too big. Let me make it a bit smaller. So very quick and very easy. I go around my design and fix that up. You'll notice she's got a bit of a hot spot on the nose. We can use the blemish tool to, uh, to address that issue as well. If I take a look at the toothbrush, simply click on the teeth and I'll give her nice pearly whites. Again with the eyes, single click. If you end up with something like this where it looks like you get too much calamine, simply a matter of dropping your strength down. And then of course we want to add a little bit of a, uh, a warm glow to her. I'll bring this up a little bit and then simply a matter of painting on the suntan. And of course interactive property bar as I've mentioned already allows me to adjust the strength as well as the size. I'm going to bring up this one. We're going to do a couple of little effects with this and then what I'll do is uh, I'll open up the, uh, the lines to see if there's any questions. So I'm going to show you a couple of tools we've already seen. Uh, we're going to basically do a little bit of a model makeover on this image. First one I want to use is the crop tool. You'll notice that when I do select the crop tool, I do have some freeform sizes. So if there's a specific size you want, you can certainly pick it from here. That's not a problem. I also have the ability of uh, rotating that and whatnot. The, uh, the other thing you'll notice is that I have the grid. This is the golden rule or the rule of thirds. I have the ability to turn that grid on and off as well. And of course for those who are not aware of what this is, it basically allows me to better crop or compose an image to make a much more appealing uh, composition. So I'm going to select that right there and I'll click OK to this. So already we've tightened up on the face a bit. The focus is now on the eyes. I'm going to grab my blemish fixer and let me just zoom in on her face a little bit. Alt key to change my brush size and very quickly go around here and fix up a few of these little blemishes. Of course I can leave them on there if I wanted to but and I see a little bit of an issue there. That's couple of undos and get that one back. Let me zoom into that a little bit more. Make my brush a little bit smaller still. All right, so the next thing I want to do with this young lady, um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to change her eye color. So here what we can do is I'm going to create a new layer. Now of course um, Paint Shop Pro does support layers. 
Uh, not only that is when I do export this out as a PSD file, it will maintain layers. If you bring a Photoshop file into PaintShop Pro that happens to have layers with it, the layers will be maintained when you bring them in as well. So you've got great uh, cross maneuverability there. I'm going to grab my paintbrush and I'm just going to zoom into the eyes, make my brush a little bit smaller. Again, the Alt key allows me to change my brush size. And we'll make her look a little bit Irish with the green eyes. This uh, this uh, thing I'm doing right now is kind of neat, and I can actually put the. I've seen the young girls with the the uh, the blonde hair, the pink streak in their hair. You can certainly do that sort of thing uh, with this uh, particular effect. What I'm going to do now is in my layers palette, I'm going to change the merge mode. I'm going to change that to color, and I can also drop the opacity down, make that a little bit lighter. I'm just going to grab my eraser tool. So you see a little bit of a oops, control Z, a little bit too much gone. There we go. So I can adjust the, the color. Now I've shown you the uh, color changer tool already. So again, I can click on her eyes and we can change the color. I can give her blue eyes, I can give her green eyes, I can give her on the red side. Very quick and very easy to go around and change a high color. So let's give her blue eyes. And what I want to do now is I'm going to add another layer. And we can name her layers. I'm going to call this one lips. And now I'm going to give her some lipstick. So scroll down a little bit. I'll go back and grab my paintbrush make it a little bit bigger. Now with this particular subject it's not too bad. She doesn't have her teeth showing so I, I don't have to worry about that. If she had teeth showing then of course I wouldn't want to do the uh, uh, the, uh, the teeth otherwise it looks like it would look like she'd been eating her lipstick. Um, here what I can do again I'm going to go to merge mode. I can select color and feel free to play with these different. We can do multiply mode. Uh, luminescence isn't too bad. Uh, color or saturation or even hue isn't too bad either. Uh, again, I can adjust the opacity of that, drop that down, and then again with my color changer tool, I'll click on the lips, and because this is a, a different layer, I'm just affecting that one layer. So let's see if we can add a little bit darker red to it. It's actually more of an orange. Now let's go down here. There we go, nice little nice uh, pink lips on her. And let me go back I'll zoom out a little bit on this. Final thing I want to do with this particular image, I'm going to make sure I have my main subject selected from my effects menu down to photo effects. And in here what you'll see is, this is our time machine. Of course we grabbed it from the Learning Center before. All the stuff in the Learning Center is available through the drop down menus. Uh, film and filters, there's quite a variety of different filters that I have access to in here. So in here you can see that I've added a little bit of a warmth, almost like a champagne color. We have vivid skin tones and there are some presets. If I go to Glamour, for example, uh, I can add a bit of a Glamour filter, uh, add that type of effect to it. I'm just going to click OK to this. And the next thing I might want to do with this is back up underneath my effects and then down to Photo Effects. Just wait for it to come up. And it's doing the backup. And I want to do Selective Focus. So in here I'm going to use my elliptical one. I want to drop that saturation right down for now. <clears throat> and of course um, it's going to uh, preview each time I do that. Just change the shape of that a bit. And of course I can see in the, uh, the panel on the right hand side, I can get a, a preview as to how that's going to look. I can also change the amount of, uh, of feathering and the blurring and that sort of thing. And I'll simply click OK to this. And there we have it. I don't really like that. I probably want to make it a little bit warmer. So if I went back into the, uh, into the film and filters, I can adjust the color. I can also do it uh, in the selective focus. We'll leave that as is but I'm going to bring up the saturation a little bit and that's going to add a little bit of warmth to the uh, to the image and click OK to that. And there you have it. So that basically brings us to the end of this session. 
Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, uh, I don't see any uh, any questions that have come in as of yet. We've got a pretty good turnout. I'm going to uh, try and open up some of these microphones and uh, see if you have any questions. We'll start at the top. Uh, I may get feedback, in which case I'll have to mute your microphone. But uh, I'll do, let's say, three or four at a time. Um, Allison, do you have any questions? Uh, okay, if you can't hear me or if you're not able, if you don't have a microphone, feel free to type the questions in if you do. Uh, Anita, how about yourself? Becky, do you have any questions? Okay, I'm getting no audio back from you guys. Uh, Chris, I see that you've uh, asked a question. Let me just go to the questions panel. Uh, Chris, yes, the session is being recorded. Kathy, do you have any questions? Okay, I'm having an issue uh, hearing. Uh, Justin, uh, if you can hear me, are you? Uh, can, I, can I have you type in the question panel and just let me know if you can hear me? Um, so, uh, well, Chris, you can't hear me. Um, okay, so one question uh, from Lisa we, uh, that she's typed in was with respect to the color changer, if you have a specific color value, uh, how can you enter it? Um, what I did with... Uh, with the, the image on Facebook, uh, what I can do is just copy a specific image. So I grab the, uh, the, uh, the Bud bottle, the, the, um, uh, the, 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 blue, the, the blue bottle, and using my eyedropper tool, I have the ability to do a mouse over, and it will give me the RGB values. What we're seeing here is RGBO. The O is for opacity. Uh, so we've got red, green, blue. So I'll, I'll hover over the blue on the bottle. Now that I know that, that color value, if I open up an image that I want to change the color to, and let's bring this guy back, and I'm going to load up his mask, And uh, let me just grab a, uh, an image very quickly. So paste as a, a new selection. I can paste that in there. Uh, I want to pick up this shade of blue, so I see it's 23, uh, 0, uh, 109, and 238. So with my color changer, I'm going to click in here, and let's select a proper area. You'll notice that when I click that blue, it changed my color over here. And for some reason, it's not allowing me to... Uh, Change that. Oh, I see. But basically what I would do is I bring the image in. I'll use the eyedropper tool to click on that color. That will change the color for me. And then I'm just going to apply that to the particular image. I'm not sure why it's not doing it to this. Let me uh, just try to remove that uh, selection and see if that makes a difference. 
there we go. It's done the blue. So it's possible the mask was in the wrong position. That area was masked off. But that's the particular shade of blue over top of that to black. But that's typically how you would do that. Now, let me go back to my questions panel. And I'm, I'm concerned not getting any audio from you guys. Um, <clears throat> so Becky asked how you can uh, upsample an image from uh, printing on a billboard. In PaintShop Pro, you cannot do that. Uh, typically, you wouldn't want to increase an image any more than about 20%. In Corel Draw Graphics Suite, of course, or, or rather, uh, you have uh, a Photo Paint. Within Photo Paint, under the File menu, you have the ability to export your image to Photo Zoom. Now, Photo Zoom will allow you to upsample an image, and it does a fairly good job. Uh, so that's probably what I do. Uh, what I can, pr what I might be able to do is is create a small. Uh, um, tutorial on, uh, to show how that's done or I'll see if I uh, see if I can track one down and I'll I'll send it off to uh, to Justin so he can post that as well uh, that is a quite that is something that I show uh, at those sessions as well um, okay so uh, Sharon thank you very much for that information it looks like a lot of you don't really have microphones so do feel free to type your questions in um, how can I upsample color changer okay we've covered that Still have no sound. How can I get a sample image? Okay. All right. It, it looks like uh, we've gone through uh, all of the questions. Um, so yes, it's being recorded. We've already covered upsampling. Uh, using the eyedropper tool will allow you to um, pick up a color from another object. And I think that's about it. I'm not seeing any other questions uh, on the panel. Uh, so we, uh, um, yeah, so we, we, can, uh, we can certainly uh, um, uh, handle that. Yeah, so all of the questions have been handled. I do want to thank everybody for attending. If you have any questions later on down the road, uh, you'll be receiving an email tomorrow. And... Uh, the, um, that will allow you to uh, just reply to that email, and I'll do my best about answering those questions. Uh, as far as special pricing for, uh, for Paint Shop Pro, there is special pricing that is being worked on with Ev and, and, uh, and our side here uh, for you guys. I, unfortunately, at the, at the time of this session, I did not have uh, access to that pricing, uh, but what I'll do is... Uh, when we post the recorded message, the recording, by then we should be able to uh, to announce to y'all what the uh, what the price is for that. So I hope that uh, I hope that answers everybody's questions. Uh, this was a lot of fun for me. I hope uh, hope you guys have learned uh, a thing or two. Remember the F10 that will bring up your learning center. And as I say, if you have any questions uh, later on, do feel free to to pass those on. I also occasionally. Uh, um, I was going to say troll. I don't do that. I, I occasionally stick my head into the, uh, the Facebook page and try to answer some questions in there. So I'm going to end this session now. Thank you very much, uh, ladies and gentlemen. This has been a lot of fun for me. And uh, hope to see you on the flip side. Take care and have a great day.